uh, I want the next 24 hours to be over so badly. <laughs> Vlogmas day three that you can hear my laptop back there making all of the noise. Um, it's currently exporting my Vlogmas day two, which is going up pretty late. I must say that is my bad. I didn't finish editing it last night before we went to our friends. Sorry, I'm shaking a lot. Um, before we went, we went to our friends to see the fashion show. Um, and then we were there very late and I feel like crap this morning, which is my own fault. <laughs> fine um but yeah my plan for the day basically we have a final project um that we have to present and finish today and then present tomorrow for quantum so that is my plan pretty much for the whole day which means this may be one of those days that i was talking about where all i'm gonna do is lay in bed because i feel like crap and work on this final project because it's due tomorrow i may film a little bit but i think if anything i'm gonna do a quick sit down chat about my quantum class because i know a lot of you people are interested in it you people i don't know i know a lot of you guys are interested in it so i figured i would give you guys a quick little discussion kind of tell you the sorts of things we learned uh like my favorite bits and pieces that kind of thing so that's probably what this vlog's gonna be when i make up my face a little bit more um for now i'm gonna be in bed working on this project so mm. Just got my last programming assignment back for the um, my object-oriented programming class, which we're learning Java in. Um, I was doing so well on these assignments, like I literally got A pluses on all of them, A pluses on all of the labs, and then the one before this, I literally failed. I don't, I don't even know what happened. I just failed. Um, and that really, I was so upset. Like I saw it and I was just shocked. Um, so thank God I got the last mark back for the final assignment and I got 10 out of 10, A plus. Kind of makes up for me failing, but it means that in the whole class right now, I am sitting at like a 79. So I just need to do well on this final, just to pull it up into an 80, you know? That'd be nice. That's the goal I think for this class. I'm taking a break from my paper that I'm writing. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys, as I promised. I also didn't vlog anything today because it has literally just been like this project all day. Um, so I now have my tea, I have terrible lighting. I should have done this when it was still daylight, but I just had to make sure that there was stuff I got done before I did this. So we're gonna talk about quantum. Um, I just want to tell you guys right now right off the bat um because i don't want to scare anyone away with this because quantum computing sounds like a scary thing <laughs> um at least i think so i just want to let you guys know right off the bat i am going to explain this in the simplest terms that i possibly can because i personally at least think that it's a pretty daunting topic and i don't want you guys to feel like it's out of like your understanding i guess because it you can understand it, you know um, So I'm gonna try and explain it in the simplest terms that I possibly can I'm kind of just gonna go over what I learned in my quantum class um, The kind of things that we covered I guess my favorite parts maybe um, But I don't want this to be too long So so the first thing that we started learning was about qubits which are very very important. They are the literally what quantum computing is based on so um, if you know anything about computers, which I'm, I'm gonna have to assume that you have some basic knowledge of um, computer science in order to understand this, I guess. So computers information is stored in ones and zeros in bits. Um, so a bit can be either a zero or a one. Qubits, on the other hand, are quantum bits. Also, if someone watches this and they're an expert, corrections and um, like further explanation is more than welcome in the comment section. I'm always, always want you guys to be like talking about that and learning more. So if you have something to share or something to ask, please do not be afraid. The comment section is a safe place. You can talk about whatever you want um, without judgment. If someone's being mean to you, I'll just delete them because don't be a jerk. Um, <laughs> qubits can basically be zero or one 
slash zero and one at the same time. And the way that works is that imagine this little particle placed on a sphere, um, like a globe. It's called the block sphere. I'll put a picture here so that you guys at least know a little bit what I'm talking about. So this qubit, its state is placed somewhere on that sphere. Um, and then basically it has a probability to either be zero or one. So say that zero is at the top of the sphere and one's at the bottom. So depending where on the sphere that qubit is, that's the probability that it's going to be a zero or a one. So that's how it can be tied into classical computing um, and how we can represent information in the same way is because we can still represent it like that just it's not a set state zero or one, it's rather the probability that when you measure the qubit, it will be zero or one. And certain transformations and um, operations can be applied to qubits and to sets of qubits in order to like push the pop probability more towards one direction than the other, I guess. Honestly, that's, I feel like, a good way to cover the basics of what we learn. So we learn how to represent states of qubits, um, we learn about the block sphere, we learn about manipulating them and kind of determining the state that they're in depending on where they are on the sphere. So there is like trigonometry involved. We learned a couple different algorithms that I'm not comfortable with going into too much depth on just because I don't want to say something wrong. And if you guys are interested enough, I trust that you can research stuff yourselves. I'll leave links down below that really helped me. Um, when I was trying to understand this stuff because it's weird like it's a weird thing to think about Using these little particles these little qubits to represent information in a non-classical way because the qubits are such small Particles, I guess like they can be photons um, So they're very very tiny and the laws of quantum mechanics apply to them So by exploiting the laws of quantum mechanics we can do some really funky things with the qubits, I guess. Which of course, I am no expert. This is my first class on it ever. Like when you measure a qubit, it settles to a, a specific state. And then after that, you can't just like change it afterwards, which is kind of weird. So basically if you've measured something, that's all you get. Like you don't get to go and be like, oh, well I'll just change this. Which is why we have all of these operations and stuff to apply in order to increase the chances of us measuring what we want when we do happen to measure it. This is such a hard thing to explain and I don't even really understand it that well, but I want to get you guys interested in it. So a couple of the algorithms that we ended up covering, we did Simon's algorithm, B BV algorithm, which is Bernstein Vazirani. We did a super dense uh, coding protocol. We did quantum teleportation, some very like big ones, especially for quantum cryptography, which is actually what our final project is about, um, our Shor's algorithm, which is used for factoring large numbers, which if you know anything about um, cryptography and kind of like cybersecurity and the way that encryption works, a lot of it is based off of the difficulty to factor extremely large numbers, which I just learned about this semester. So also not an expert at that. So Shor's algorithm is used by a quantum computer to do that, which is why quantum computing, I guess, is such a big thing because since the discovery, I guess, or the development of Shor's algorithm, people have kind of realized how serious it is and how like that algorithm could basically break through all of our current modern encryption methods. Um, and once again, everything that I'm saying is extremely generalized. If you want to know a lot more about it, I will leave links, I promise. Um, all of like just a pool of information will be in the description box for you guys. We learned, and we also learned Grover's search algorithm. I think that's it. Let me double check in my notes. Oh, I'm also gonna show you which textbook we used. One of the difficult things about quantum also is that because it's such a new field to be studying in, it's hard to find really good, well-explained resources online. So I'm gonna link the like plainest ones that I can find, the ones that explain things, I think, to a good point for a beginner because that's what I am. Um, this is the textbook that we used. It is called uh, Quantum Computer Science, an Introduction by N. David Merman. Our professor, so her research area is actually in quantum. So she, like, this is the textbook that she 
figured, I guess thought was the best resource for our class. So I really trust that. <laughs> yeah, let me just try and see what else we covered. We covered different sorts of, different kinds of gates that you can apply to qubits, um, including the poly matrices. So yeah, it has also has a lot to do with like matrices. So I guess if you did linear algebra, which in computer science you probably require, it was probably required. It has a lot to do with that. Um, so we covered, we learned about the poly matrices, like X, Y, Z matrices, um, Hadamard, which is a very, very important and interesting gate. We'll leave information about that. Um, C naught, I think that was it, honestly. Oh, we also learned Deutsch's algorithm, which I missed that one. Just to go over some, some main ideas, I guess. The reason, if you guys are wondering, you're like, well, quantum computer science or quantum, like they talk about this all the time. So why isn't it a thing yet? Basically, um, the more qubits that you introduce in a quantum system, the higher chance of error, I guess, the more errors you will come up with. So you have to find a way to deal with those errors and to correct those errors as you get to larger and larger systems. As well as apparently the quantum computers at, because they do have some that are the largest one right now is at Google and it is 72 qubits, but like they have to be kept in an isolated area at extremely low temperatures in order to keep the qubits at like stable states, I guess, and in order to not like to reduce errors and not get as many issues. So like there's a lot of the theories are all very solid and the theories are all extremely promising, but the actual engineering feats that are required, I guess, to create a quantum computer large enough to actually run these these algorithms and these theories and to make them work they're still working on. So that's why it's not really a thing yet, I guess. But it's definitely on its way. Like, <laughs> I found it really interesting. I'm definitely gonna look more into it. It's such a new field. You know, like sometimes I used to get this feeling where I was like, oh, it kind of sucks. I feel like everything has been discovered. And then it's fun coming into a class like quantum computer science where this is a new field and people are still researching this and discovering more and more about it. Um, so it's a really exciting time to be involved in computer science and anyone I think who has any knowledge about it will tell you that So if you are if you are interested whatsoever I like I said, I'll leave beginner resources down below Like research it learn about it. It's really cool stuff um, I'm gonna end it there because I, I figured I'd have a little blab But I do have to finish cleaning my room and also get back to that assignment I just needed a bit of a brain break and the brain break I decided to choose was talking more about quantum computing. That is what the past 12 hours of my life have been and what the next 12, what time is it? 12 hours will also be. I hope you guys enjoyed Vlogmas Day 3. I will see you all tomorrow after I finish my assignment. And then after tomorrow, everything is done. The final project is done. All of my assignments are done. The last thing that I have to do is study for exams. And that's like easy stuff at this point, honestly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smile and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.